Welcome back to Comic-Con 2015, everybody. Max and Anthony coming to you from the show floor, and we've got Joel Enos from Biz Media here to chat with us. Joel, you've, you've brought something a little more wholesome to our set than I think we've seen. We've had a busty red She-Hulk. We've had okay. lots of big, strong warriors yeah. and a lot of violence. Ask. It got a little weird, but uh, <laughs> let's talk about Hello Kitty 40 here. All right. Uh, well, Hello Kitty herself right. did not turn 40. Oh, she's a kid. Is she immortal? Is she but an immortal being? She's a fictional character, okay. so I hope so. It's basically the same yeah. thing. Um, but actually, you know, Hello Kitty as a phenomenon and as right. a character is 40 years old, or was actually last year. And so we decided at Viz, we've been doing the Hello Kitty graphic novels for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. It's been a big hit with uh, younger readers right. and actually older readers. <laughs> so we did something where we got 40 different artists. We actually have 41 artists. They okay. call it one for good measure. but. Um, Never do hurts. their own version of short Hello Kitty stories. And are these just sort of like one-off, like they are, one-off tales? You don't have to be versed in the Hello Kitty like multiverse or anything oh, to appreciate it. that's a great thing, it. is like Hello Kitty can almost fit into anything. Right. So that's what we did, is all these people that were inspired by Hello Kitty or really into her when she first came out or into her now, and they could do them in their own art styles, which is pretty cool. So we've got Jenny and Matt Holm who do Baby Mouse, Ian McGinty who does Ugly Doll and Bravest Warriors, um, got a, a lot of really interesting people. Corinne Howell who's doing Transformers now and Batmite. And is this exclusive to the show or can people buy this now? Uh, there is an exclusive at the show that has a special dust jacket and a kind of some snazzier stuff. This is not the exclusive version. I was not allowed to take that <laughs> out of our booth. I'm sure you got it under <laughs> lock and key, I bet. <laughs> this is the real version or the non-exclusive version, but it's still really cool, hardcover. Yeah, you can definitely go buy this now. Um, and the reason I brought it is it's the first thing that we've done at Viz that's an original work in the U.S. It's right. nominated for an Eisner. A lot of what you do is like adapting a lot of different Japanese properties. It's the majority of what Viz does is actually take Japanese series, anime, and manga, and I guess some of the terms are localized, but we adapt them and bring them over for the U.S. market. Joel, how has localizing changed? Viz has been at this game a whole lot longer than anybody else that has been working in More manga. than 30 years, I think, in different years. versions. Yeah. And like, you know, Viz used to, you know, try and bring things to the West and present them like Western comic books. You guys did like floppy tabloids. <laughs> and Dragon Ball, way back then. Way back yeah. when. I bought those issues. I yep. was that guy. I, I did too. <laughs> so. How has the process of actually localizing manga changed? Like, do, do, you, do you have to see in your audience, like, oh, they're a little bit more savvy now? Even when you're talking about, like, an all-ages audience, do they, are they familiar with things that they wouldn't have been in the past? I think absolutely, yes. I mean, probably within the last 10 years, I've, I've been at Viz for just about that long. So I actually came in at the beginning of what they call the manga boom. And then there was kind of, you know, people have talked about the manga bust. It didn't, it didn't really right. bust. It just became more mainstream, I right. think. And so you've there got were all, all the articles of everybody being like Barnes and Noble and Borders are crashing because yeah. they <laughs> devoted all this space to manga. And it's like kids kept reading it. Well, now everybody's reading it. And then right. you've even got what I'm starting to see is a whole crop of artists who grew up reading manga, working for mainstream companies who actually have an influence in their work, yeah. which I think is pretty incredible too. That's just starting to happen. But the, the, way, the short version of the way it's changed is people are more savvy. Um, you've got a whole generation of people that can read books either direction, yeah. and they don't need a warning that says, you know, start from the right. other end of this book. There's always the, hey, you're reading this book in the wrong direction guy in the there back. There is some <laughs> debate about that among editors, actually. Yeah, are you getting ready to, like, just phase him out completely? No, because I think it still needs to be there for new people that pick it up. Right. Yeah. But there has been talk, and there are some books where we don't put that in anymore, and it actually doesn't cause a problem. Joel, what is... So for me, Maxwell and I are, like, we're old school anime guys, right? Yeah. And I'm gonna date myself here. Like my first stuff was like, you know, freaking Sailor Moon and Dark Horse pushing out Blade of the Immortal. <laughs> when okay. it, like issue one. Yep. And Max, what got you in? I mean, I was one of those '90s tsunami kids. I mean, that yeah, was my introduction. There, I was right. growing up in the South. I mean, our our anime pipeline was pretty narrow. That's so pretty it was narrow. like me and tsunami. Yeah. So what now, what's the new gateway drug? What is going to get somebody in? Your recommendation, and it, what, what classy Viz publication hey. would you say? No, well, but like seriously, the, the manga for, for the true beginner. The true beginner, I mean, if, if you're talking about early readers, I, I think you're still talking Pokemon. I mean, we've been publishing Pokemon manga the whole time. It's, yeah. it's the kind of series that 
people talk about, oh, the resurgence of Pokemon. It never went away. But it hasn't gone away enough to have a resurgence. So that that's still there. And I think that, you know, it's, it's fun and it's exciting. It's appropriate for all ages as well. Sailor Moon is still a thing. I mean, we it's actually back. are doing the anime. Yeah. It's... There is new anime, there's new versions of the original. Um, so that's a gateway drug as well. It's really, you know, as you know, it's a very complex show. And uh, I think that can draw people in too. So you would say if you have an all ages reader, you 10 year old boy or girl, Attack on Titan number one. <laughs> Eon Genesis <laughs> Evangelion. Yeah. Going over the oh into boy. the deep end just a little we'll bit there. there. <laughs> no wait. Not what, that those things are bad, right. right? But what appeals to you? Like you've done so much all ages work. You worked on Ben Ten. You're doing. You you've helped with the localization of Yokai Watch. What appeals to you about you know catering to that audience specifically? Um, I think you know the the word diversity gets used a lot, but I think the diversity that we're starting to see in comics is really important. There's comics for all types of people, everyone. Um, I think it's really interesting. But sometimes I feel like the focus on sort of kids still reading comics and actually having entertainment, it, uh, visual storytelling can help kids learn how to read yeah. who are either reluctant or having trouble. The Hello Kitty uh, comics don't actually have words in them because she has no mouth, so she doesn't actually speak. So it's a really good way to show storytelling without words, and that gets you into you know kids can learn how to follow along a story. They start to understand where the words fit in. How does Hello Kitty eat? I've never thought of this Happiness, before. Happiness, good feelings, <laughs> yeah. sunshine. Maybe some kind like of absorption. I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's a subject for some more other time. <laughs> Joel, I'm not an expert on. Thank you so much for stopping by. Yeah. Hello Kitty 40, available <laughs> now. Folks, be sure to keep it locked here to Games Radar for our ongoing Comic-Con coverage.